Hi, my name is Brandon, and I'm an alcoholic and addict in recovery. And in recovery circles, we talk about the idea of terminal uniqueness. This idea that a lot of people suffering sub from substance use disorder have that they are alone in what they're experiencing in life. That there is something special about them that makes their experience in life unrecognizable to other people. Um, and I certainly felt like this when I was in my addiction. I felt like the, the things that I was experiencing in life, the pain that I was experiencing in life, was only pain that I had experienced and nobody else had gone through that kind of thing. And looking back, I, I, it, it amazes me that I felt that way because with so many people in the world, you have to imagine that someone out there has gone through the same thing that you have. And what I found in recovery is that it goes even further than that. It's that most pain we feel in life is, is common amongst all human beings. And as soon as we can stop feeling like our pain is unique to us, and start uh, recognizing the importance of uh, experiencing that pain with other people and, and helping other people who are experiencing that pain, then we can start to accept it as reality and move past that being the focal point of our lives. And so when I was reading from Going to Pieces Without Falling Apart by Mark Epstein this morning. Uh, it, it, there's a section about this that really uh, encapsulates the idea of it. And so I want to read this. Um, he says, There is a well-known story in the Buddhist tradition, the story of Kitsugatami and the mustard seed. Like most good Buddhist stories, it can be understood on several levels. A young woman named Kitsugatami lost her child, uh, her only child, to illness around the time of his first birthday. Bereft, she went from house to house in her village, clasping the dead child to her breast and pleading for medicine to revive him. Her neighbors, thinking her mad, were frightened and did their best to avoid her entreaties. However, one man sought to help her by directing her to the Buddha, telling her that he had medicine she was seeking. Kitsukatami went to the Buddha and as we go to our psychotherapists and begged him for medicine. I know of some, he promised, but I will need a handful of mustard seed from a house where no child, husband, parent, or servant has died. Making her rounds in the village, Kitsukatami slowly came to realize that such a house was not to be found. Putting the body of her child down in the forest, she made her way back to where the Buddha was camped. Have you procured the handful of mustard seed? He asked. I have not, she replied. The people of the village told me, the living are few, but the dead are many. You thought that you alone had lost a son, said the Buddha. The law of death is that among all living creatures, there is no permanence. And the part that, of course, stood out to me here, again, there's lots of different layers we can look at here, but the part that stood out to me was you thought that you alone had lost a son. And that's how it feels sometimes, is that we alone are experiencing the pain. We alone are experiencing the problems um, that we have in life. One of the blessings of being able to go to a recovery meeting and being able to have fellowship with other people in recovery is that you get the opportunity to, to uh, discuss your and to share your pain with other people who have felt a very similar pain and that it extinguishes this feeling that you alone are experiencing something because the feeling that you are the only one experiencing something that that is uh, to me it was a step beyond loneliness um it, it was a st and a step towards desperation I needed to get into an environment and into a habit of 
uh, I needed to get into an environment where I could connect with others who shared the kind of pain and struggle in life that I was experiencing. Once I did that, then solutions started to present themselves. For me, those solutions came in the form of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous and working the steps. Uh, for other people, uh, they've come in the form of, that I know, they've come in the form of refuge recovery and other groups uh, around fellowship and and focusing on sobriety. Um, but for everybody that I know that really is finds it important to fellowship with other people in recovery, it's come from that sense of community and that sense of sharing pain and helping each other through the painful times that we all share in common. And so he goes on to say, it was only by facing, not denying her personal tragedy that Kitagatami could understand this greater reality. By struggling with and accepting her loss, she could understand the Buddhist teachings. No longer striving to contain her grief and keep herself together, she nevertheless stopped falling apart. By appreciating that she could never have what she thought she would have deserved, she was able to relax. Her emptiness stopped overtaking her only when she stopped taking it personally. And that was a big thing for me. I took my emptiness, my problems very personally. Um, you know, when things would happen um, to me that were painful things, I took those personally. I, I felt like the world was against me, that... Um, there were things happening in my life that were that were against me personally and i i did not really focus much on the fact that this is just life happening this is just the world working the way the world works i really was keyed in on how the pain felt to me and obsessed about how painful things were in my life um I didn't think too much about how painful things were in other people's lives. And I didn't think too much about how much in common I had with those people and how maybe if we got together and talked about it, we could help each other out. I didn't think too much about what I could do to stop feeling the way that I was feeling. I was focused on what the rest of the world needed to do to stop me from feeling the way I was feeling. Once I accepted that what I was feeling, the emptiness inside, the desperation inside, once I accepted that that was something that pretty much everybody goes through at some point in their life, then I could start looking at, well, what solutions have they employed to try to handle that? Once I started doing that, I found some answers and I found a way to move forward that helped me accept what was going on in here, share it with other people, and then help them do the same thing. And that's really, I think, the key to me for this, this story. I love this story and the idea that, you know, and, and, and the thought of losing a child. I mean, that, that the idea of that just, I, I can't, it's hard for me to articulate how that makes me feel inside. Um, and I can't imagine going through that. And yet the terrible truth is that there are literally millions and millions and millions of people who, who go through that pain. And when you look around and see what kind of, when, when you experience terrible pain, but then you look around and see all the other people who have experienced the same pain, you can find strength in that community. And by engaging with that community and, and following some of the uh, practices that they've employed to lift themselves up, you you can find some peace that way and, and start moving past that pain and into the kind of acceptance that leads to a little bit more of the peace and serenity that for those of us in recovery 
is necessary to keep ourselves sober in the long term. That's it for today. Hope you have a good one, and I'll be back here tomorrow with more.